So we've talked about some basic data processing instruction, adding, subtracting, logical instructions, testing, comparisons, and moves. Now we have some special purpose data processing instructions, multiply, multiply and add, and swap. Um, these are important because they are used often and they are a little more complicated uh, than just regular adding and logic. And as we saw in the previous videos, com uh, computing multiplication is a long complicated process because it's a state machine process. You have to shift and add and shift and add and shift and add. And so the multiply instructions in ARM are specialized instructions. They're still data instructions. You still have bits 27 and 26 being zero. Uh, but you have special conditions across here which specify multiplication, multiply add, and swap. So these are special instructions that we're going to look at. So the multiply instruction, you have two flags. You have the flag A, which says whether or not you're going to do the add. And you have um, the flag S, which specifies whether or not you're going to store the condition code register. And then you specify four registers, RD, RN, RS, and RM. And we'll look at what they're for in a second. Swap, same kind of idea. You have a flag called B, which is whether you're swapping a byte or a word. And this is used to move data back and forth from memory. Now, there are load and store instructions, but a swap instruction takes a register and a memory element and copies them. So it's a load and a store together, uh, which is a very specialized instruction, takes extra time um, because you're still moving stuff back and forth through the memory tree instead of just keeping it in the CPU. Um, but it's a very simple load store instruction that does both at the same time. Now, there are some restrictions on this. You can't swap at the program counter, which makes sense. You don't want to stick the program counter in memory, and you don't want to bring some random value in from memory into the program counter. And you can't do it in such a way that the, uh, m the register used for the source into the memory um, has to be different from the register used for the address for the memory, which, again, makes sense. Right? That address for memory, Rn, can't be either the source or the destination of the swap. That makes sense. So we'll get into these in a bit more detail, each one. So multiply, for example, you can multiply R1, R2, R3. And that just says, into register R1, multiply R2 and R3 and put the results. Now, you'll remember that multiplication in MIPS, you had to have two registers for the result because the result could be much larger than, um, than two registers together, right? If you take two 8-bit numbers, the result can be as big as 16 bits. But in ARM, it doesn't worry about that. It says the result is going to be the result. And if you're multiplying two numbers together and the result is bigger than 4 million, well, then you're going to have a problem. And so it puts the result in a single register and says, just deal with that. It's going to be in that register. Because the problem is, if the result is too big for two registers anyway, then you've already accelerated your calculations beyond the scope of the computer. And so ARM says, if the result of a multiply can fit in a 32-bit register, carry on. If it can't, you should be doing different things anyway. So the result fits in a single register. Um, so that's R2 times R3 goes into R1. Done. Simple. Uh, M L A E Q S. This is multiply and accumulate. So this is multiply two numbers and add the result to a third number. This is a, as it turns out, a very common operation. Multiply, accumulate, and so this is baked into ARM. So multiply and accumulate, conditionally on the previous instruction being equal or z equals zero. Um, and so what you do is you multiply R two and R three together, and then you add the result to R four. And because you've got the S flag, you're going to set the condition codes there as well. So this is a very common, as it turns out, operation. Multiply and accumulate. R1, R2, R3, R4. R1 gets R2 times R3 plus R4. So that's multiply, multiply, accumulate. Swap, you specify two registers and then an address. So you put R2 in square brackets because that says this is a memory address. You're going to bring whatever's at memory specified by R2 into R0, because that's the destination. You always list the destination first. Then you're going to take whatever's in R1 and put it into the memory specified by R2. So R0 and R1 are data, and R2 is going to be interpreted as an address. And so you'd better be sure that R2 has an address in it. This is why you're not allowed to use R15, because the program counter is an address for instructions, not for data. So that's swap.
that's going to take data from a register, put it into memory, and then take whatever was at memory and put it into a different register. You could use the same register, right? If you had R0, R0, R2, then you're just going to take whatever's in memory and whatever's in your register and just switch them. But with this one, we're taking R0, we're taking the memory, putting it in R0, and then we're taking R1 and putting it in memory. So different registers in the register file, same address. And it's got to be the same address. One address. Uh, and then swap B. This is going to be swapping only a byte of memory instead of a whole word of memory, right? It's going to load R2 with a byte addressed by R4 and then store bits 0 to 7 of R3 at R4. So it's byte addressable instead of word addressable. And then another example, swap EQ, R0, R0, R1. We're going to say if the previous operation resulted in a 0 um, or if the comparison said that those two numbers were equal, then we're going to take R1, R0, and flip them. Right? Simple examples of multiply and swap. Now, there is a 64-bit multiply because there are some times where you want to have the option of having the result fit in, um, the result be able to be stored regardless of how big it is. If you take two 32-bit numbers, the result of multiplying them could be as big as 64 bits. Now, I don't have that on the sheet. I think it's not common. Uh, and I think the recognition in the assembly language community is that if you're multiplying two numbers and you need to deal with a 64-bit result, maybe you'd be a, you should be thinking about something else, doing it a different way. But ARM implements it because it's an option. Okay, And these are uh, written as U-M-L-L, U-M-L-A-L. -L. So you specify, so multiply long, right? Unsigned multiply long, um, signed multiply long, and sign, multiply, and accumulate long. So all of these are options. Um, and again, I think it's unusual to use them. But what you do is the result goes into register D high and register D low. So you specify two destination registers and then a multiply register um, and a, a multiple CAND and a multiplier. And those two get multiplied together and they get multiplied as an unsigned or a signed. And so these all these options, they exist, but I would encourage you to maybe not use them. All right, so that's the specialized instructions for multiply and for swap. And now in the next video, we're going to get into load and store, which are the really interesting ones.